Yo, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, The Talking Mustache. Today we're going over a Crew Arms Temp 556. It's the Canadian ACR we have at home. So let's dive on in. So, but before we go any further, I know you're on the toilet. I know you're watching this, drinking your coffee, consuming your beer. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you don't do anything else, the comments actually do warm my heart and I read them when I'm on the toilet. So it's uh, like we're connected. It's the toilet synergy that really, you know what I mean. Ugh. Like that athleticism, boyo. So what is the backstory of the Crew Arms Temp 556? So originally, I believe this was called the Crusader Arms Templar 556. So it has a little bit of a fun name to it. It's kind of one of those names. It's kind of cheesy in my opinion, but I mean, crusading is kind of, it's kind of fun. You know, if you're a crusader back in the 1100s or the 1000s. God wins it! I think it was the 1100s. Anywho, so the context of this gun is that Canadians are kind of, very restrictive. They don't have this thing called the Second Amendment like we Americans have. And so their government took full advantage of restricting as many firearms as the Canadians most well, said you can restrict. Now this gun came about as a workaround of legality. So it is as good as it probably gets. Now I'm not sure and I'm not familiar guys totally with the banned weapons in Canada. I know for a fact Doing my research, AR-15's banned. I think AR-180's are banned. Anything in that category, anything cool, probably gonna be banned. So this gun came about as a result of that. So how they worked around it essentially is the two takedown pins right here are a millimeter off uh, from what they said, and they aren't compatible in any way, shape, or form with AR-15 parts or uppers. I mean, I should say uppers in that sense, or lowers. So you can't make it an AR-15 style weapon per Canadian law. And that's pretty cool because now you still have this capability, and I'm not sure how they get their firearms, I'm not sure how they store their firearms because I only speak in Freedom Eagles, but if they can secure this gun a lot easier and they don't have to go through the hoops of acquiring an AR-15, they can get this gun much easier then that is mega base because you have a God-given right to protect yourself. So this Temp 556 was made in America, but they are legal in Canada, if that makes sense. So these aren't made in Canada. Yet again, they're made in America. So I do like that. I do like American-made products. I like products that support Americans. That being said, I will not stop picking apart the gun and I will tear it apart because I believe in serving you guys, my audience, over you know, the manufacturer. I got this particular firearm from Gun Zone Deals, who at this time is going to be the exclusive distributor of this particular firearm. Now, there was no exchange of money. There was nothing like that. It was simply like, hey, I'll take the gun and I'll do my usual big chimp and monkey thing for YouTube with the firearm. So that's essentially it. Ammo was provided by AAC, which is the ammo sponsor of the channel. Gun was zeroed with some 77 grain from AAC. So big thank you to AAC, Mega Base. They believe in arming American citizens with as much ammo as possible. Very cool and thank you. Gentlemen, before we go any further on the Crew Arms Temp 556, we of course have to thank the sponsors of this video. Sponsors such as Americana Pipe Dream Apparel. Big thank you to those guys for taking the time to sponsor the channel. They are fantastic young Zoomers getting after it in the mill SERP world. I'm very proud of them. I'm w wow, I'm so proud of them. How proud of them am I? Very proud, very proud. I'm sorry, I'm sorry you had to witness that. We also have to thank Infinity Target. Uh, you know, you gotta have something to shoot when you go to the flat range. I'm a big believer in mag dumping into trash, but for the times and the occasions of when you wanna take your training serious, Infinity Targets, consider them out. You will see the B-roll, but I was mag dumping these bad boys point blank with a 762 by 39. They're still holding up, like kind of like that self-healing target type thing. Blew one big hole in it, but that was from point blank. But overall, she's doing pretty solid. Spray paint her up and they are good to go. So big thank you to those guys. All right, let's get back to the video. If a cactus falls in the desert, do you hear it? So what is essentially this gun? Essentially, it's a beefed up AR-180. And so to prove it to you, we're gonna take it apart and take a quick look-ski at it. Weapon is clear. All right, now we gotta take our little bullet. We're gonna punch out these bad boys. And they're kind of tight as a tiger. Getting these mugs out. All right, so get our pins out going. Pop off the back. 
there we go. All right, now it's pretty much from this point, if you have any familiarity with the AR-180, it's like a beefed up bolt. And this bolt's actually pretty chonky. It's a very thick bolt. And it looks very familiar, of course, to an AR-15 bolt right here. But the entire mass of this whole thing is properly thick. And then we have our recoil springs and guide rods. The thing is pretty simple. And then just tossing her back together. I'm gonna throw this mug back in. If I can, if I'm not retarded. There we go. Get our recoil springs. Toss them back in. Now, of course, if you want to be better at this than I ever will, go ahead and feel free to check out SDI, another sponsor of the channel. Get accredited gunsmith training and look way better at this than I ever will. So big thank you to SDI. Maybe if you get accredited gunsmith training, you'll actually be much more coherent with your gun words than I ever will be. Oh, monkey. I'm a monkey. All right, so let's go over some of the features of the gun real quick. So we got a 16 inch barrel, got the classic ACR looking stock. I think this one's made by F5, a monolithic upper. If you don't know what monolithic means, Neither do I. Savio put it in. Thank you. We have the Surefire G2X, a very affordable weapon light, but I mean, is there better stuff out there? Of course. Hooked up to a mod light hot button, aim point T2, and a non reciprocating charging handle over here. Manual of arms, just real quick, very similar to an AR 15. You got your safety selector. Still figuring it out, weirdly, and I'll explain here in a second, but mainly this little bolt drop right here. All you have to do is push up and it drops the bolt. Now, you have what seems like a lot of ways to lock the bolt to the rear in this firearm, and that's technically three ways. Three way, no, Jesus, I'm sorry. All right, now, lock the bolt back with this neat little MP5 style charging handle. You can lock the bolt to the rear, which is kind of fun because then you can HK slap it, but you have that option. Then you have your bolt catch to the rear you can lock the gun open with. So I guess we just hold her down and she locks open. And then of course, the final method, and that's just typically with the magazine empty, walking it to the rear. Though, I will say, I was having on some of the rounds, I don't think the bolt was locking the rear on the last round, so let's try that out real quick. So I just got one round in the gun. There we go, let's see if she locks to the rear. Okay, there she goes. On some of the rounds, she wasn't locking to the rear on me, which is kind of frustrating because it just helps with that speed of reload for getting another round into the gun. So the trigger itself is just going to be some sort of mil spec trigger. This is compatible with better triggers out there that are compatible with AR-15 triggers. But out of the box that I got, I got a very eh trigger. It's not terrible. It's not great when you get spoiled like I have by nice guysly triggers and nice, you know, zero black, like, like very nice triggers. This is not one of them out of the box at least. Of course, you can always swap it out and get a better trigger. So let's talk about the things I, let's start, well, hold on, Savio. Should we start with the good or the bad? Start with the bad. No, I wanna start with the good. So what I do like about the gun, I like that it is good to go for Canadians. I like the idea of that. I feel bad for them that they don't have the same Second Amendment rights, but I guess you should have revolutioned harder back in the 1700s and then slowly had all your rights chipped away anyway. That's kind of a meta take, but, I like that it's good to go for them. I like the aesthetic of the firearm. I like that if you're um, if you're one of those guys that doesn't enjoy AR-15s, if you are a hipster to some capacity, then you will probably like this. You'll think, hey, I want to have all the benefits of you know using 5.56 and 5.56 mags, and I don't want to have an AR-15. Then this will be good to go for you. At least it breaks up the monotony. I think these are retailing for around $1,900, so probably around two grand all said and done, which. I'll talk about in the dislikes of how that makes me feel, but I also love, love, love the ACR stock on here. It's very much that ACR we have at home type vibe. Because this gun has the ACR stock is pretty much why I was like, okay, I saw that and I was down to do the review on the gun because there are guns I will turn down just because I don't think they're intrinsically that interesting to the audience, but this is one of those where it's so new, there's not a lot of info out there on it. It doesn't have a track record, let's try it out. Now that's one of the things I like about it. And one another thing that it has going for it is it has a transferable lifetime warranty. So that is a little up factor for you if you are into that. As well as the aesthetic of the stock, I do love that it has the folding stock capability thanks to the AR-180 uh, style system in the gun. So that is pretty cool. The charging handle is fun with the slap down if you wanna do MP5 style. 
then I dig it. Of course, the monolithic rail is great for lasers if you're running Nod stuff, so there is that. Now, let's go over the dislikes. So weird thing about being a gun YouTuber and doing it as long as I have is that I realize, for the most part, whenever I get a gun, I don't usually hate it. There are just things about it that I strongly dislike because I end up getting these guns and I shoot them and I have fun with them and I don't really run them through, like I'm not like surviving in the trenches of Ukraine, right? I'm running these in a very comfy environment. At worst, the weather's bad out, right? I'm not worrying about dying, so I don't get a true intimate relationship with this gun. So running the gun in its comfy environment, there are the things I don't like about it just off the get-go. One thing I don't like about the gun is the logistics behind it. With it being kind of a proprietary thing, I'm not also familiar with, you know, the AR-180 logistical supply chain. I'm not familiar with the Crew Arms Temp 556 supply chain. I am very comfy and familiar with the AR-15 logistics of like all the parts I'll need, everything I know that's gonna wear and tear. This is a new platform, technically speaking to me, and I worry about that as far as longevity goes. Now to counter that out, they have the lifetime warranty, but that is when times are good. In your worst case scenario, if things are going bad, you may not get to use that lifetime warranty. Another thing I like slash dislike is how solid this gun is. It is built like a tank. It is freaking girthy, it is chonky. I think it's around the eight to nine pound marks, all said and done. And it, well, it's a, it's a thick mama. It's a thick crusader. It's got the armor of God on. But that's also a downside because ounces equals pounds, pounds equals pain. So carrying this mug for a long duration of time, if you have not been hitting the gym, then you are going to suffer, but that's why we work out. I don't like the lack of M-Lock rail space on the gun. I can see they have a lot of cuts on the rail for maybe lowering the weight, but what makes me mad is that you only have one, two, three panels on the side. And then on the bottom, one thing I really, really hate is the gas block, this like the screws right here are essentially blocking one of your M-Lock panels towards the back. You may be able to squeeze a panel up front that's smaller, but it is really annoying because I was trying to put on a M-Lock rail there for mounting a bipod and it wasn't happening. And I could also, running it without a glove is kind of like a, hey, tough it up thing, but it's also a, a real thing. Is when your hand is gripping that, those screws are those, I, I believe we can call them screws kind of thing. Those screws are exposed enough to where I could feel it, and thankfully I wasn't shooting too much so it didn't burn the heck out of me. The charging handle aesthetically, as far as looks go, I think is kind of ugly. If you come in here, Savio, you can see the exposed screw heads on this, as well as a weird looking charging handle that looks kind of kind of cheaply made, if I'm being honest. I wish they would dial this in and make it look a lot better. I don't know why. I feel like anything other screw type minus these type of screws look better. This is just in my head. I'm sure they had a reason for doing it. Maybe simplicity, maybe it's just the early model thing. I don't know. I don't like it. It is what it is. Now, another thing I'm not really fond of is going to be the hide over bore. So if you're looking to use your optics that you already run with the AR-15, your certain style mounts, you'll kind of see like, this isn't a crazy high skyscraper red, uh, red dot mount. But due to the location of the barrel, how low it is on the gun, this space becomes rather drastic. It's pretty much getting borderline on, it's like a weird, I feel like it's a weird symbol or something. I feel like, so I wanted to say that feels like three to four inches of hide over bore. So this is a rough measurement. Because I was aiming to get these A zone hits, I was aiming pretty high over the target to get those hits. And keep in mind, this thing is zeroed for, you know, a solid like 50 yards, so nothing too crazy. But I was aiming rather high to account for that height over bore, which is deceptively high because this barrel sits so low in the gun, right? You can see how much space is on top of the barrel, and it's, it's a lot. It's kind of like, why is there so much? Could you guys not close the gap down at all? So there's a huge gap in the gas system and the barrel if you come in here and you can see it. I don't know if that's normal for these type of weapons. I feel like you could maybe get them closer and reduce the overall signature because I don't hate the handguard. Handguard's kind of tall, but if you could reduce the size, then hey, um, I don't mind that. I'm okay with that. So the price factor of it being you know, around $1,900 also is like, well, you know, if it's around two grand and say like a SCAR 17 or a SCAR 16, or maybe even the actual ACR, I think they're all floating around three grand, three grand plus, which is expensive. But it's like, if you're already that close, you might as well save some money and keep going down the line a little bit further. So I think time will tell to see if these things actually do catch on and, and see if there is a desire for them. And if there is this weird thing that people just love them. But I personally, if I'm being honest, I don't think these are gonna catch on in the American market, if I'm being brutally honest. 
I think there's gonna be hipsters that like them. I think they may get us very, very small cult following, but it's one of those time will tell. I'll happily be wrong. I wish the company nothing but the best. They seem like good, good people. They seem very awesome but it is one of those like, all right, let's see what actually happens. But like I was saying earlier, guys, usually when I get a gun on the channel, keep in mind, I get pretty much all my guns now for free. So I'm not like emotionally invested in trying to sell you this gun. I don't care if you ever acquire one. I don't, I don't care at all. What I care about is you being well-armed, well-prepared and well-trained, of course. Come on, come on, I got the shirt one more round. <laughs> Kid's not doing too bad. Seems to be pulling it off. But he'll learn. He'll learn that though the people love a hero, what the people love more is watching a hero fail. But I think the final thing we should do is see how this thing does with a dirt test. I'm a little curious. Let's see how she does. All right, weapon is hot. Got one in the chamber. We'll uh, find a nice little dirty spot and cover her up. You were hiking out in the Arizona desert. I'm actually more concerned about my T2 optic because though I get guns for free, I strangely don't get a lot of optics for free. Throwing some dirt onto our gun and the most important part, arguably. Yeah, let's throw dirt on gun. I never thought this would be my job as a grown man, just out of the desert with the boys, tossing dirt onto a, a weapon of war, kind of. All right, the skinwalkers are approaching. You know what? I'm not happy with that. Is that better? I think that's better. Oh God. Ugh. All right, you know, actually, I feel like we got her dirty. I feel like, did I not get her dirty? I feel like it looks properly dirty. I wanna keep it on a closed chamber though. I feel like that keeps it fair. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, she sounds crunchy though. She sounds hella crunchy. This is my uh, makeshift fighting pit that we used for the channel. It will now be the uh, makeshift dirt test. <laughs> it's too big, too big of rocks. We need fine powder. That one feels crusty. Here, let me see it. That's, you got rocks and small nooks and crannies. I wanna give her a fair shake down. The rock stays. All right. I don't wanna get my face near it. No trigger reset. So, extracted, but didn't get the next round in there. Oop. She is crusty. Bolt's not wanting to go home. All right. Oof. And then a failure to extract. So I don't think she's passing that second round of trials. Let's see if we can cycle a few. No, she's not resetting that trigger. Hmm. In Canada, we'll harvest maple syrup power. In Arizona, we must harness desert power. A bummer is on AR-15s on the bolt, there's a little bit of leverage where you can actually push the bolt forward. On this, you don't really have a forward assist of any kind. So if the AR-15 doesn't have the forward assist, it, you can also kind of guide the bolt forward. With this bad boy, you really don't have the leverage to like jam it in. All right, I think she's about, her, her goose is cooked. She's not locking up and I don't wanna try and like pull the trigger on her. Well guys, that was a quick, dirty little look at the Crew Arms Temp 556. Just a real fast, low down look. Not a crazy, crazy in-depth round count was conducted. So there are factors such as that, but it is kind of like a, you know, as someone who shoots a lot, this is something that I looked at and these are a lot of the things I observed. Time will tell as these get onto the market more. 
So we'll, we'll see how it does. Maybe we'll revisit it down the road. So I did some more shooting a little later date and time after cleaning up after the dirt test. Gun still feels really sluggish. I mean, the bolt itself is a, it's, it's supposed to be what I was told is like a, a 308 bolt, but it's also used as a 556 bolt, if that makes any sense. I'm still getting annoyed by the exposed keys here or the screws here because these boys heat up pretty hard and it's catching me in my little tender thingies. <sighs> Gun was feeling very sluggish, had two malfunctions. Then again, I'm running 55 grain ammo. So out of this long 16 inch barrel, I figure there wouldn't be an issue. A lot, a lot of dwell time with this gas system. So, I mean, it, that's kind of frustrating to see that. Yet again, I mean, it's tough, man, because I do like the gun. I like the idea of them doing something new and I like them being innovative. I think there's some kinks they gotta work out and hit the drawing board uh, to work out. So if they can do that, then I say, hey, cool, get on them. So she is dirty, I'll give her that. I did a hasty cleaning of the gun, you know, post dirt test. And uh, she's still not doing how I want her to. As always, gentlemen, thanks for watching. Stay easy, stay breezy. And if you wanna see some exclusive content, why don't you go check out that Patreon where we have videos that we don't put on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. How's the wind? He's retarded.